So get this, it's estimated that the LGBTQ community alone have over $3 trillion in spending power and are very often completely missed and neglected as a potential consumer. And it's not just LGBTQ that's being missed out, it's hundreds of different diversity audience such as BAME, the Black, Asian and ethnic minority groups that just aren't being spoken to, whether that be in B2B or B2C. Well, in this video, I sat down with Chris Kenner, who's the CEO and founder of Brand Advance. And Brand Advance work with some of the biggest brands in the world to help them reach diversity audiences. And Chris shares some fascinating insights in this interview around how to authentically speak to and reach diversity groups and how the environment and the placement of of your marketing messages or content can have such a significant impact on how well it's received and how likely the person is on the other end to make a purchase. We also dive into the ever-changing landscape of marketing and advertising and what businesses and brands are gonna need to do in 2020 and beyond to really stay relevant, so stick around. Hey guys, it's Tom here from Elevate Digital and today I'm joined by Chris Kenner, who's the founder and CEO of Brand Advance. They are a agency who help brands reach diversity at scale with authenticity and I'm quoting that off your website. Chris, um, thanks so much for joining me. No, no. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I would love to, to really kind of dive into that and especially that kind of quote you've got on your site and why... Um, reaching diversity audiences is so critical and also why contextual advertising is so important for, for any brand or business in this day and age. So so firstly Chris, what 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 is contextual advertising and why why does it matter to business? Uh, yeah, yeah. Contextual advertising. Well really it's you know, I'm sure there's a load of buzzwords that people would say, but for me it's reaching people where you know a common thing about them at scale you know so contextual advertising in lgbtq plus press is you know one main thing about them everybody that's there is either lgbtq plus or they have an affinity to that media so you know you didn't need any data sets you didn't need any overlaying of first second third 25th party data to actually target them you know that everybody in that particular uh, contextual environment have one interest or thing in, go in common and then you use that to build a brand story or to make great creative that engages yeah. you know i think advertising is going to go is already having to step backwards in their eyes we had contextual advertising has been how advertising was made you make something you stick it in a in, in a place where you know so you make a piece of creative you make it emotive or strike some kind of emotion in the person that's watching it or engaging with it and then stick it in a place where most people that are likely to have that emotional connect are yeah you know whether it was a poster whether it's on the side of a uh, a milk carton or whether it's digitally in your hands when you're going to a publication or a news report mm -hmm. that relates to you your surroundings your race religion sexual orientation whatever that might be it's just it's just work contextual advertising it's a connection isn't it it's, yeah you yeah, know yeah, that makes total sense because what and and like i think and one of the things i and you probably see this all the time and you've probably got a few more examples but like one of the mistakes i think i see a lot of businesses making is they try and just you know use one particular marketing message to reach everyone right mm -hmm. reach many people as possible um but you know one of the stats i i, I noticed you had on your website was um i think if uh, if a message or a brand is perceived as culturally relevant people are 2.7 times more likely to make a purchase right and i think that that in itself yeah yeah cool. um and i i think that's like really really powerful so what what else are some of the kind of big um, mistakes that you see businesses like falling into when they're trying to reach you know diverse audience? I think just gone in the day where you make one Coca Cola ad and you play it and everybody goes and buys Coca Cola. Them days have gone. I'm sure they were great for Saatchi and and the likes when you know when they were first sat at the top of their ivory towers, but 
um, that's gone. That has gone. We now, you know, we don't do things on mass. That doesn't mean we don't have common interests because we do. And clever creatives can find them common interests. There are things, the one thing that unites us all is humanity. We are all human, you know? So if you can find something that plugs into humanity, we'll all stand by bits uh, side by side. Normally bad things like, um, obviously this is on YouTube, so someone could watch it anytime. But at the moment we're going through the whole Corona thing. You're starting to see, People that were arguing trade wars or nearly at war a month ago are now stood side by side while they scan their citizens to make sure everybody's well. Do you know what I mean? So humanity can, it doesn't matter what the differences are, you can sort of uh, come together. But I think marketeers have moved away from running campaigns that speak to your humanity. It's all data. You know, I'm not saying it's totally dead and it's obviously going to come back and there's always breakthroughs, but how many, you know, remember when you were a bit younger and there was lots of campaigns that were just powerful, creative, stuck in the right place and it just went, Poof. now, I can't, there's so few and far between that, you know, maybe there's just more being made and I don't see them all now, but you would have thought with technology would bring all of these moments closer to me. I actually see less. And I think marketeers, they've just forgotten about contextual relevance. It's all about what did you do yesterday? What are you going to do tomorrow? And let's try and find that point where you're the weakest and most susceptible to do what we need you to do, whether it be purchase something or whether it means, you know, uh, some kind of call to action that says, I want you to do this and I'm going to pick the right time because I'm going to use all the data about you and just you know, get you at that time where we think that you're susceptible to it. Mm. Contextual is none of that. Contextual is just, you're in an environment, we know that you're going to be comfortable in that environment because to be in that environment, uh, you must have an affinity to whatever that environment represents. And then we're going to put a piece of creative that sits so sweetly in that environment that it's not going to jar. It's not going to feel like an ad a lot of the time. It's going to feel like, that environment is an influencer. You know, can, I think that's the bit, the, the ads on most, on the independent are an ad. We see a thousand of them a day. I think we need to now see an ad seven times before it's relevant or something like that. You know, we, but actually what you want is people to click an ad because not that they didn't know it was an ad, but that they felt that the environment was influencing them to do it as much as your ad was. Because as good as you think your creative is, in a 250 by 300, it ain't going to be that good. You know, like, it's just a piece of creative. It can be beautifully shot. It can animate in an amazing way. But it's just a box. It's a box. You know, so if the whole environment can make that box more appealing, why would you not do it? Mm. I'm waffling a little bit, but I hope that made sense. No, no, that, that, that was super powerful. And what you just said there about the environment... Influencer, I love that. I've never heard that. Um, I, I made it up. That, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Just put that on a t-shirt. Yeah, no. um, yeah, no, that that that's really powerful. And I want to dive into that a bit more. So, like, because you guys do, um, you help brands with like radio, like radio, all sorts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's let's kind of because I think and, and what you said there about you know people like over obsessing about data it's a big thing right and, and people, you might have even noticed this as well but like I, I read a statistic recently about like ad blockers like I think it was like 40% of the entire US population using some form of ad blocker and it shows how um, I think aware people are that they constantly being advertised to and they want to get away from that they want to be spoken to like human mm -hmm. like and, and feel respected how, how does like the environment play a part of that and what's like you know the right environments for people i think everybody knows not everybody knows about keyword locking so not everybody knows that the words gay and black and muslim and interracial are blocked mm. more and more i've been shouting about it a lot so more and more so that has stopped ads getting into these environments 
they probably weren't contextually relevant ads anyway. Let's be honest. They were made for the masses, but they couldn't even get into these environments. So people within them environments, you know, whether it's an LGBT person in gay times or it's a black Asian or minority ethnic person reading the Voice magazine, you know, or, and all of these equivalents all over the world. When when they're in that publication, then these publications mean more than a newspaper or a magazine to these people. You know, mm. like there's the first time you've seen a black person represented. For me, I can remember the publication. It was actually The Voice. The first time I seen a person that was the same color as me represented in a good job, not as a cleaner or, do you know, what I'd seen with my eyes. I was in Man Manchester, you know. Um, and for me, that good job was they were, an art, they were in the army. And then I went and I seen that. I can remember I was about 13, 14. And then I joined the army when I was 15 and nine months because I'd actually realized I'd seen myself. That, that was me there. The, um, the same thing as, well, you know, I came out for gay later in life. The same thing as the first time I picked up the gay times. It was like, oh my God, I'm telling the whole world I'm gay. These are the powerful meanings that these environments have for people. And I'm not the only one. It's like millions of people that whatever it might be, might be nowhere near mine, black and gay. But there's lots, there's lots of reasons why you picked up a contextually relevant publication. Yeah as opposed to the independent or the metro because what is that gonna you know they'll be the first time you read the metro that's probably the most iconic day that you've ever gonna have with the metro mm. every day since then it's gonna be downhill well it was pretty much downhill when you picked it up you know but <laughs> but publications that speak about your race your religion your sexual orientation and speak about other people that are within the same bucket as you and that you can feel you have an affinity to that's what makes these environments so powerful that's what makes them influencers because they influence they tell they tell you and other people like you with what is and what is not what's good and what's bad these publications and platforms if they're a contextually relevant environment 19 percent of the time they have always been deemed as the other so they're sat outside of mainstream They've not had uh, much advertising, but but the uh, the publications deemed the other that are for the other. You know, they are. Let me okay. Let me start again. Seventy three percent of um, Brit Asians in the UK, the second dem biggest demographic after white British. Seventy three percent do not think mainstream media is. Uh, is aimed at them so that is and do you know what anybody watching this right now that is from an Asian background will say yeah every time you go to my grands they would never have the BBC on they have got you know one of the other channels that no one gets to on Sky yeah. we know it you know we've watched movies like East is East where we've seen it's on in the background that is a true portrayal not the movies not but the fact that these channels sit on the background, you know, and they don't, they don't watch ITV. They're watching all the channels that we go and shove under one um, thing called multicultural sky, mm. you know, and that's a contextually relevant environment. Yeah. And you start sticking mainstream with a s mainstream products that they see over there and they ignore as an ad, but then stick people or situations that um, relate to them within that advert, whether it's print or, or a digital video, etc., stick them in there, and then you put it into an environment where they're actually there 73% more than they are in the BBC, yeah. then, then you're, you're striking goals. I think even, even aside from that, like something you just mentioned there, it made me think of... Um, I, 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 had ADHD. I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was a kid, and um, I, I very much tried to block it out for a lot of my life, and I only was reminded of it a couple of years ago, and I read a book about ADHD 
um, just recently. And I had the same feeling of like understanding, like, oh my God, someone actually understands. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that guy who wrote the book, I will... I, I will buy stuff from you know if he if he talks about something I will buy it because I mm -hmm. feel there's a connection yeah because yeah 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 um, and I think I think like even aside from you know where I'm consuming things that that you know call it an environment call it an influencer like whatever it is that it's that sense of understanding like mm -hmm. understand me so whatever yeah, I'm yeah. in that place I can, I can trust it right yeah, yeah yeah yeah. I really love that. That's that's so powerful. Um, and and okay. And I know um, I know you've got to head off in a bit, Chris. I know you're busy. Before um, before we do, though, just one quick question around like, what do you think are some some kind of easy changes that that businesses or brands can start implementing to start reaching diversity with with a bit more yeah yeah as well, right? Instead of making it feel forced or yeah yeah yeah. Um, I think you do need to, 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 I mean, I'm trying to think of the best way to wear that. Okay, so I don't always believe you have to get your whole house in order before you can start speaking to people on the outside. And what I mean by that is, you know, some companies just don't really, aren't quite there with, let's say, their internal DNI processes. They're not, they couldn't quite say they're a fully inclusive company. You know what I mean? They don't. If somebody was to say, I'm Muslim and I want to pray, they'd probably all go, you know? So let's be honest. So, and I haven't got time to wait. I've got two kids. One's mixed race and one's white. I haven't got time to wait for these companies to get themselves in order before yeah. an advert that they put themselves out, it can reach both my kids equally. I haven't got time for that. So. I, I don't always say you have, you must get your house in order before you do an advert. Like if you sell things to customers, well, it doesn't matter how much you get your house in order. If you start running out of customers, then your company's going to go under, and you could have had the best DNI project ever inside, but you weren't doing well on the outside. So I do think it's more important on the outside for companies and with commercial companies. You know, us as marketeers, we're there to make our clients more money. You know. I'm quite fortunate. I've built a company that by helping brands speak to um, demographics that are deemed diverse, that's how I make money. But, uh, but at the end of the day, we're helping you see, sell stuff to black people. We're helping you sell stuff to gay people because you need to sell more stuff. Yeah. You know, like it's not a make the world a better place project it just so happens that our commercial model sort of makes the world a little bit of a better place because never you know the money from from that advert that you put in gay times actually seeps into the lgbt community mm. you know and so it's elevating the community because they're getting a consumer spend that in all honesty straight white has been having since the dawn of time so so you know um I think I'm so digressed off the bloody question. Let me think of the best. I would say definitely start thinking about who is your consumer. You know, everybody, everybody buys soap, you know? So, or and I'm pretty sure whoever's watching this, whether they're a marketeer and it's the brands they work with or whether it's a brand owner, I'm pretty sure they, whatever that product is, everybody buys it. Everybody everybody or a version of everybody so you know so rather than having selling to demographics just sort of go into it with this open mind of actually you know rather than it's an abc one white males buy this let's look at it they're just two times tech buyers and skeptical you know that's it don't Hems, hem it in so much that you're only going to find people of that within one demographic because society, you know, rightly or wrongly, society has sort of made that demographic populate that stronger. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, by, by, I think I'm trying to say it without actually saying it. So what I mean is <laughs> demographics 
like LWT have been chastised for quite a while. They're not anymore, but it's going to take them time to filter into everywhere as prominent as a straight white person. Yeah. Aim even worse, you know, let's, let's be honest. So it's going to take them time to filter and get back up, you know, get back up. They've never been up to, to be everywhere in equal representation for how many yeah. people might be in an area. It's going to take time. So I think you've just got to make sure that the sort of, the, whether it's a brief or whether it's your response to a brief accounts for that mm -hmm. because you will still find some ABC one might be what you say is the, the known version of your consumer, but actually ABC one might be something else in a different demographic. Mm but they've still got the same impulse to buy your product. So there's that. I, that was really long-winded. I hope people can take something out of that. Slow, like, speed it up and, I don't know, <laughs> get, you, get YouTube to do that uh, subtitle thing. Another one that I would say is the start to look at where is it that you're selling. You know, like, we've all got used to mainstream. Yeah. So then you're only going to get one one main type of consumer and then other people that drop in start looking over there and then i think the third is what are you blocking i know we all have to be brand safe and brand safety is major at the moment it gets worse every day because somebody finds an ad next to something that it shouldn't be and next thing they're blocking yeah. climate <laughs> you know the actual word climate is now up there in the top 10 really? words. yeah yeah because that ad got found next to an anti-climate change video <laughs> So now it's, you know, but like you get brands like Diageo, just to show you the stupidity of what, where it's got to. Diageo, uh, the biggest, uh, what are they, drinks brand in the world, spend X amount of million per year on frozen cocktails, um, right? And so that's on advertising frozen cocktails because they're Diageo. But number three on their keyword block list globally is frozen because frozen is attributed to the biggest kids movie and kids and alcohol don't mix so they block the one word that they spend millions on getting finding people that are interested in mm. people that are interested in frozen cocktails are the perfect Diageo consumer because frozen is linked to a kids movie they block it you know it's not it, it seems like that's too simple and they do do ways and i'm not picking on Diageo. that's just an example but it's and they're our client and they don't want to lose them so love you Diageo. but <laughs> just in case they work um but it just shows the bluntness of these tools so you just need to look and make sure that your tools aren't so blunt um that they're chopping away and well the easiest way to do all this selfless promotion just come to brand advance and we'll sort it all for you yeah absolutely and uh, yeah, just before we wrap up, I was going to ask you as well, like how can, um, because you, you work with both publishers and the advertisers as well. Yeah, right? so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're the network and then we are the, the diversity media agency for the, yeah. for the advertisers yeah. as well. Awesome. So, and, and what would be the process, for example, if somebody had a, um, you know, it would be a blog site or anything else or any other type of business out there that can speak to a particular audience what's the yeah they need to go through to get in touch with you guys um just go to wearebrandadvance.com and then go on to the publisher section um whilst you've mentioned it we've actually just put out a hundred thousand pound fund where people can uh we don't take it's not a loan or anything you can get between 500 and five thousand pounds to uh start a new publication just all that we ask is that it's digital because we're going to ask you to put your advertising inventory on there but um but yeah that speaks to any demographic that you want to you just come with a business plan and you send it and then if, if we think it's going to work and we'll help you do it uh, set it up we'll then give you the uh, give you sort of a i suppose it's a free grant really yeah um so that because you know it helps us Let, let's yeah. I've, I've been very honest since the day I announced it at Future of Brands. We want the inventory because we want advertisers course, yeah, yeah. to advertise around. But also we want these voices back because for yeah. the last 20 years, 
these publications have been closing at an alarming rate because they've never been getting any revenue. Yeah. You know, you so people a platform as well, aren't you? To you know, like you said, express themselves to speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they need to be. While the leader of the free world is the Antichrist and everybody else in between. You know, like we need the voices of people, the the, the demographics, the unheard, the other. They need, we need to keep their voices around. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, that's amazing. I really appreciate your time. I'll drop no a link to um, the website in the description below the video anyway. Uh, but Chris, thanks again, dude. I really appreciate it. No problem. Cheers. Cheers.